and welcome to Fell Seal Arbiter's Mark. For those unaware, this is an early access strategy RPG game that is going to be released on Steam on the 30th. This video is being uploaded on the 29th, so you'll get a little bit advanced here, but I haven't gone as far into this game as some of the other testers, so I'm only familiar up to like the first real boss fight. Otherwise, as for what to expect, this is a job system RPG, so think along the lines of Final Fantasy Tactics rather than something like Fire Emblem, I guess. And it's not at all like Disgaea, so just a heads up in that regard. So you'll see what I mean as we go, but here's your main three, and we'll jump right in. I don't know how long the game is exactly, but I'm going to set this to Veterans, so everything's default except for one thing. I'm going to be doing this one to increase the number of enemies, you'll see why as we go. But otherwise, to explain a few things, the injury system is punishment if any of your guys die in combat. They have to sit out a round in order to get rid of the injury, which gives them a stat penalty. The alternative is permanent injuries, so they lose random stats as they get more and more crippled. And then permadeath, where they get five injuries and they are finished. You can lose everyone other than the main character, and I don't have a cursor to show you, but it's the woman on the left. Enemy level scaling, I'm not really going to do excessive grinding or anything, so this doesn't really matter, but you can increase the cap, you can turn the cap off, and so on. As for the raw stats, this affects the enemy stats themselves rather than the levels, so you can give them a plus 5 across the board, 10, 15, 25, all the way up to 50, and they mention you probably don't want to bother with this because it's not even close to being balanced. We're going to go normal. As for the added enemies, the only option is, oh, you could turn it all the way up to elite but I'll stick with extra. So this will give you one more enemy on maps with some exceptions, and then the elite will spawn a rare unit. As for the enemy gear, there's quite a few accessory slots. They're not always going to have that unless you turn this all the way up to full. If you give them more, they'll have one or two more occasionally, and unfortunately you can't steal the accessories like you can in Final Fantasy Tactics, which kind of sucks, so just a heads up. Enemy passives counter, sometimes they won't have spots in there, or they won't have slots filled. This one is kind of weird in that you can't turn it up so that they always have them, you can only turn it so that they don't always have it. Whether or not the enemies have the capability to revive, you can go for more and the fights take longer, you can go for less, or even none. I'm going to stick with default. Enemies have access to consumable items, this is stuff like potions, remedies, and so on. You can have them have a lot, you can have them have none, default. And for how often they use it, rarely, occasionally, and then very frequently. So this is the way I want it set up, and without further ado, let's jump right in. So here's your opening intro. In the dark days of centuries past, another worldly beast known as the Ma appeared in Diora, leaving ruin in its wake. In this time of need, seven great heroes rose against the threat. The battle was fierce, but the heroes prevailed, and the beast was vanquished. In slaying the beast, the heroes gained the power of immortality. They formed the Council of Immortals to rule over the land and enforce order to prevent such a catastrophe from ever happening again. But powerful as the immortals may be, they are few. Thus, they created the Order of Arbiters to enforce their will and protect the land. As agents of the immortals, Arbiters wield absolute authority. They are judge, jury, and executioner. But in time, the Order of Arbiters has grown complacent and corrupted. Could a threat as dire as the ancient beast itself be looming over Tiora? Sadly, that's the only piece of voice acting in the game. As far as I know, the build I'm playing this on is the release build, unless there's some sort of major bug. They're not going to tweak anything in balancing, so that's why I'm going forward with this now. Kyrie is your main character, she's the dark-haired one on the left, Anadine's the apprentice on the right. Good work, Anadine. You handled yourself well. Thanks, Captain. I don't feel like I actually did all that much, though. Violent confrontation is always necessary or desirable. 
Negotiation is an equally important skill for an Arbiter. Of course you're right, Captain. Are you sure Raynor knew the time we agreed to meet, Captain? Yes, he knows, but knowing Raynor, he's probably... Did you hear that? I didn't. Help, please, anyone! Sounds like it came from the alley just ahead. Let's go. What is the meaning of this, sir? Why on earth would you strike down an unarmed man? Explain yourself. Pesky witnesses. What a bother. You, hireling, earn your coin for once and dispatch these interlopers. So, this that's the name of the city, Gale. I think it might be Gale Jelly, I don't know how it's pronounced exactly. Alphonse is the blonde dude. The dude in the red hat is the generic mercenary. So in the deployment phase, you get to choose who all joins the battle. You have a certain number of characters. This tutorial, they only give you three characters, but I've seen up to six, I think. So you have to choose who you want to join. Virgil is your wizard. They show you the controls here. I'm familiar with that. Pause if you want to read. Yada yada. So you have Virgil and Lana. And, of course, if you're familiar with Archer, I have to go with Lana. Lana's our healer. So with these characters in place, we are going to start... This is a mercenary. That's what his sprite is. Get used to it because you see a ton of them. As for the portrait on the left side, that's completely customizable, randomly generated, yada yada. And then Alphonse is someone who's going to be a pain in the... Yeah, for the first... Well, for a nice little stretch at the beginning of the game. So I can't go over the numbers, but the important ones to pay attention to are the green boot at the bottom. That's the number of spaces they can move. The blue body sprite is the number of tiles they can jump. I don't know what the third one is. I assume that's crit rate. And then there are various other things. You can see their equipment, any immunities they have to status effects, what his two skills are. Then this is his secondary job, Scoundrel. That's what Rainer is. Passive ability, he'll counterattack if he's hit, and so on. And then if you want to see some of our characters, they're fairly tame. So she only has an axe and stuff, no immunities. She has two moves. She has the mender effect, and she actually has counter equipped at the moment? I thought she had to learn that one. Well, they probably give it to you for the tutorial. Anyway, Anadine, she's using a two-handed weapon, the hammer. She only has one weapon, yada yada. So, let's begin. Now, the fight will end once Alphonse goes down, so if you want to maximize your EXP gain, go for the mercenary first. By lawful decree of the Arbiters, I order you to lay down your weapons and surrender. Now. You? An Arbiter? That's even more tiresome than I thought. Hireling, exterminate these pests for me and you'll receive a tidy bonus. Add once, Lord Alphonse. As you wish. Anadine, it looks as though you're about to face your first real battle. Yes, I see. I am ready, Captain. I'm sure you are. But why don't we quickly review the basics just to be safe? So they tell you combat's turn-based. You can see the turn order up at the top. The sequence is starting on the left and going to the right. Everyone gets a turn where they can move and take action, and then you, it doesn't change if you move, but you get a turn bonus if you do not take action. So right here they show you the mi icons the movement and the jump. You can see that Kyrie can move 4, jump 5. She has 3% crit, I believe. Here's your options. Attack is the generic attack. Warcraft is the mercenary jobs classes set of commands. Holy Magic is the mender. Item is self-explanatory. You get one action per turn. Now then, let's deal with the scum. So, the best tile to move is this one. And if you're wondering why, you get a bonus when attacking the enemy from a so the side. But you have a move called Forceful Strike. So you're going to knock Alphonse into his mercenary, and they both take damage. The first person contacted takes, I guess you want to call it normal damage, and the second person only takes half damage. So after making the move, you have to choose your facing. Just be aware that you get penalties of hit from the side or behind, unless you have the one knight skill. I'll show you that later on. At the end of your turn, you get to select your character's facing, try not to show your back to your enemies, they'll also deal more damage from the sides and the back, yada yada. So the Mender doesn't really do too much. 
The MP system is kind of weird. You get MP per turn, so that's why she starts out with a 10 out of 28. As long as I don't cast anything at the moment, she will not really uh, lose anything. And real quick, so she'll move four. I'm going to move here just so I'm in position, and I'm going to hold off on my attack. Then we're going to move Anadine, and we are going to hit Alphonse upside the head with this hammer. Because the game is that violent. So it's going to deal 24 damage, you can see it's a 99% chance of connecting. And you get EXP every time you take an action. You only get job points at the end of the battle. Just so you know. So I was kind of hoping he'd dart for it so I can pile on that mercenary. Good, good. Now your healers get credit for healing, so you can use that to farm a lot of EXP. So we're going to have Lana do that. You know, she got 11 compared to the other guys who got 10. Kyrie starts at 2, Anadine starts at 1. And then I don't think you get any sort of bonus for knocking them into terrain, so just go for the side bonus and make him miserable. Now, I don't get any sort of bonus because they're still stationary, and yes, they are not countering because they don't have that move yet. Now, you get an EXP bonus when you kill a unit, which I'm going to demonstrate with Kyrie right here to pick off this mercenary. Knight, our axe goes in, guts come out. So that's what it looks like when they die, and you know she got 24 instead of the usual 10 or so. The amount of EXP you get depends on your level relative to the enemy. And then Alphonse is going to catch this axe with his face. He is dead. I, I, enough, I yield. A wise choice of a bit late in the coming. So don't worry, I'll show you the fight after this and then some of the scenes just so you get a feel for the game. So victory, here's where you get the rewards, GP is money. The other things are uh, basically like components, what they're used for, I didn't get far enough in the game to see. And then you get the ability points, you get 132 for all participants, 120 for map completion, 12 for Kyrie not dying. Vicarious learning is for... I'm not sure. And then even the bench units get some AP so they stay relevant. Ladies, there you are. What's this? You didn't tell me we were going to a party. Reiner and last. Weren't we supposed to meet an hour ago? We could have used your help with these thugs. No matter, this gentleman kept us company. And now we will show our gratitude by providing him with a nice comfy cell. You cannot be serious. Do you not know who I am? I'm a lord. Lord Alphonse, to be precise. As a nobleman of the realm, I command you to release me. Slaying an unarmed man attempting to eliminate the witnesses to your foul crime and now resisting lawful arrest. There are limits to the privileges of nobility, as you are about to learn. An arbiter and a simpleton, I see. Very well, let us proceed with the farce if you must. Bring me to the arbiter's chapter house for my trial. Are you suddenly struck dumb as well as simple? The knight's chill does not agree with me. Make haste and escort me to the chapter house, wench. Reiner, I've decided to make a small detour to a luster. We will personally deliver this nobleman to the main chapter house. Clever. I wonder how much sway the little lordling has in a luster. Very little, I suspect. Gather our people and make everything ready. We move at first light. On it. Now to ensure you are comfortable for the trip. Outrageous. Simply outrageous. Simmer down or I'll pull out a gag next. No one bothers washing the gags in between prisoners, mind you. Very well. Let's head for a luster now. I'm sure our eminent guest is eager to get started on his trial. So the, the journey may be treacherous. We should stop at the local guild here in Jelly. I don't know how to pronounce the place. <laughs> and hire more hands for the road. An extra recruit would go a long way. 
So I'm going to show that. We're going to go to the guild and pick up two people. So recruit. So you can change the visual appearance, the sprites and stuff. The names, I believe, are from some of the Kickstarter backers. But using left or right in any category, you can change the view, yada yada yada. So class. I was hoping I can get a knight right away, but I guess I'll settle for a mercenary. We have another scoundrel in the form of uh, Reiner. I'm going to be picking up a new wizard, though. And they get to choose the level here, basically stuff related to skills they start out with. It's not really a big deal. Choose the gender. Then you can choose things like skin tone. This only affects the sprite itself. I genuinely don't really care about some of this, but although I like those eyes. Eye color. That's fine as is. Class hat, yes. I'm doing that one just so it's easier to keep track of them. Accessory. Kind of like that first one. Looks like a domino mask. Do they have gray? You know, we'll go purple. Class outfit, yes. And then color. There we go. We'll go purple. And then you get to choose the name. Okay, we have Shah here. And then if you want to see all the various portraits, some of these are related to the jobs. In case you're wondering, there is a plague doctor. I think there's a necromancer. And then I don't know if these are... That looks like Lana. I assume some of these are sensitive to various story characters, so I don't really want to use some of these. It's also possible some of these are from the Kickstarter backers, too, so just be aware of that. Since I don't really know, I'm going to stick with the generics until I learn otherwise. So... We'll go with this one for Shaw. And then we need a wizard. Main thing though is I just want to make sure that they're using their class hat and their class outfit so we can keep track of them. As for the color, we'll have this one be white. Name input, I'm fine with Aegis. Probably the closest one to a good wizard hat. Yeah, I feel ripped off here. Ah, uh, now let's go with this one. I don't really know what the whole reset level thing is for. Didn't really get that far into it. Now, once again, I think the merchants are Kickstarter backers. So try and buy is how you can find out, uh, well, first things first. Before we do this, I'm going to go into the menu. I picked up an axe there that I can immediately equip on her. I don't know if that's the one that she took. I don't have anything spare there, though. I just noticed both of my wizards are wearing white. <laughs> so yeah, shop. We'll do the try and buy to make sure everyone's properly outfitted. So starting with her, you can give her the Maul, which is a two-handed weapon. Doing so will cause her to stop using her axe, which is why the other stats go down. For some reason, defense goes up. That I'm not sure about, but we're going to have her use the axe for the time being. There's only one shield up for grabs, one type of hat, one type of armor. No accessories. So she's fine as is for him. Dagger is a step down from him. For like scoundrels, I guess, aren't allowed to use shields, so not too much we can do for Reiner. For Anadine, two-handed weapon, so no shield allowed. You can see if we do this, she loses a lot of attack power. <laughs> Although she does have better stuff here. Yeah. 
As for Virgil, he has his rod. You can give him a circlet. Actually, I'm going to give him the fur cap because that gives him some water resistance. So red means that you haven't bought it yet. You'll get the choice whether to keep it or get rid of it when you try to leave here. So right here I want a buckler. And they can only use the fur cap. So Shaw's now ready. Now we need Aedris. They aren't allowed to use shields, but we can give them for a cap at the very least. So when you try to leave, you get the choice to continue shopping, cancel what you did, or confirm purchase. If you confirm purchase, everything's already locked into place for them. So yeah, there is that. And I also want to point out something else real quick while we're here. So you go to buy, it'll go through the various weapon types, short sword, dagger, axe, mace, so on. They even have guns. But the thing that I'm trying to point out is, if you look at the bottom, you'll see the various jobs that they tell you can use this. A lot of them are grayed out, or question marks, until you find out what that job is by leveling up your current jobs. And if you notice, when we went through here, there's no consumable items. All of your items are fixed in battle. You don't get to buy any extras, you just have whatever you have. Now, the next thing are abilities. So, they were kind of talking about that one. So when you reach certain thresholds, that little yellow arrow will appear on the bottom right corner of the character sprite. That tells you that they can learn a move. So here are your skill trees. She already has Force of Strike and Field Aid. I like going for Power Strike because early game you're going to run into a lot more physical attackers and you can abuse this like no tomorrow. So you'll notice it deals 0.8 times physical attack stat, which is your attack. So it's not going to deal as much damage as a normal swing, but to be able to cripple the enemy's attack power is massive. And I think I actually could have just bought a knight if I had done this first. <laughs> so she now has Power Strike. I don't really like how this covers it. Let me s Damn, it's always going to be like that, isn't it? So we have Knight, Scoundrel, Mender. If you'll notice, she has no AP in the other things except for Mender, which I... Okay, I think Vicarious Learning gives you AP towards your sub-job, which in her case is Mender. And then if you ever get any passives or active abilities or counter abilities, you can equip them here, but I don't have any yet. Just to point out real quick, if you go to Mercenary, this is her first reactionary ability, this is her first passive. This is better than this, I'd say, just because that counter attack can be really, really handy. Although you can't really see it, down here is the single best move in the mercenary tree, which is the stunning... yeah, it's up there at the top, stunning strike. It doesn't deal full damage, but the important thing is it delays the enemy turn, so you can knock a low or a high priority unit that's about to attack down a little bit. The other important thing that you get along the way is sturdy grip. This allows you to wield two-handed weapons without a penalty. The only thing is you have to make sure that your class can carry it. Reiner didn't take part in anything, so he's out of luck. Although I can show you his skills real quick as a scoundrel. The important thing is dirty hit here, which is really, really overpowered. You will hit the enemy and you have a chance to blind them so that it's less likely that they will uh, be able to hit you back. And then they mention for some of these counts as a regular attack, that's important for counter attacks and so on. For steel item, in case you're wondering, this is just steel random consumable, steel buffs. Steel component is just like for crafting or whatever. Steel is you try to steal something from them when they do something to you, and so on. He doesn't really have an ultimate ability here, although sneak attack is really, really handy. I think that's the only thing he has that actually costs MP. To show you real quick, MP is the number in the bottom left corner of that skill box. You can see this costs 6, everything else is free, even steal money here up here. And that's more of a mug thing because it does deal damage. Now before we go out, make sure you actually equip something on him. I would like starting with Warcraft because you can abuse field aid like no tomorrow. For Anadine, we are going... wow. <laughs> so we can give her field aid here. In case you're wondering, this is just a normal heal type thing. Clones is some status effects, but you can abuse this for EXP. If you've played games like Luminous Arc and other strategy RPGs, you can see what all shenanigans you can do with a healer. So I'm going to give her Trickery, even though she doesn't really have a good sub job, sadly. As for Virgil, he didn't do anything, so he got nothing. And here's Lana. So she has heal already. You can get an AoE heal, you can get the revive. Blessed One is a really good passive ability because it heals her whenever she heals someone else. And then these just have random stuff. So to show you real quick, since the night job has just been unlocked as of me doing that, if I went to the guild, I should be able to recruit one now. Oops. 
Let's see. It's not really a problem. I'll use the mercenary for a little while. So up to the crossroads is our first real battle. Kyrie? Yes, I noticed. What's happening, Captain? Stand back, Anadine. Spotted. Ah, well, you arbiters are every bit as sharp as they say. But much friendlier. Well met, friend. <sighs> if you have business with us, on with it. Otherwise, step aside. Of course, I will make it quick for you. Head over that nobleman shape scene along at your heels, and everyone else can be on their merry way, safe and sound. What a splendid idea. Quiet. Safety and soundness first, exactly my philosophy. But first, tell me, just what is it you want with our bejeweled guest? Funny you should ask, from what I've been hearing lately, I bet you arbiters wouldn't mind a taste of this action yourselves, eh? Alright, here it is. This rich fop will pay us handsomely for his freedom. Hand him over and 20% of the fee is yours to divide amongst yourselves. No one need ever know an arbiter was involved in a little transaction. I get what I want, you get paid, and your reputation remains as spotless as Illustre's peaks. Win, win, win. Is there a fourth one I'm missing? Well, what do you say? Do we have a deal? Oh no, Kyrie, only 20%. Cabin? Enough. We haven't the time to exchange banter with these fools. As for you lot, attempted bribery, intimidation, interfering in arbiter business. Serious crimes, the kind that should see every one of you decorating the trees. But get out of our way, and I'll forget I ever saw your faces. That is my final and only counteroffer. Signal that you accept before I change my mind. Of all the doomy luck, we just had to run into the one clean arbiter within a hundred leagues. <whistles> Jump lively, boys. It looks like we must earn our prize today. No survivors, no witnesses. So we're at the crossroads. You have to defeat all foes. So we get to play six units. You can see three of them are already out. So I'm going to grab, of course, Lana! We'll bring out Shaw. And Aegis. I'm going to leave Virgil benched for a little while because no one likes to show off. In reality, we need to level up the new guys. So, if you want to move, just be aware of how far they can move. One, two, three, four. If we go here, we get hit, so we can stay right here and be perfectly fine. I'm not using the Warcraft thing for EXP because I don't want to lose my in initiative. So you'll notice they have a monster on the field. Oh, okay, I'll talk about that in a second. And Dean, well, why don't I give you a quick refresher on items? Items don't work as they usually do in most games, so you probably shouldn't skip this tutorial. So you get to select them in combat, go to the item command, You'll notice items have a count next to them. We get two potions, one phoenix ashes, one rock, and one remedy. That count is maximum that can be used in any single battle and is shared across the whole team. At the start of every battle, item counts are automatically refilled to their maximum amount for free, so don't hold back on using them as needed. And to show you real quick, the potion has a 45 HP heal. Lana can easily surpass that later. You get a 15% revive, or 15% HP revive, 25 flat damage. I kind of wish you had more rocks, to be honest. And then remedy gets rid of debuffs. So, uh, monster, right? So I can't move here as such. I need to be a little careful with where I do move. I don't really know if... You oh, crap, I forgot to take a quick job, sub job. Crap. that sizable trap door. I think they might have reinforcements waiting below. Well spy, if one of us stands directly upon it, that should keep it sealed against any new enemies. 
Agreed, but we must move quickly if we plan to secure it. They could strike at any moment. So, next person to move is this one. They move four spaces. It's a scoundrel. One, two, three, four. That's fine. Anyway, monster. So the important thing here is they have the natural weapon. That means they can't really use weapons. You can see they're immune to various debuffs. It's a vangle, which means it has the counter ability thorn. So you hit him, that activates the thorns, and then whenever you hit him while the thorns are up, it's a buff, basically. Well, <laughs> it's a ranged thing that you'll see. So we're going to do a trickery and dirty hit to try to cripple this one's offensive power. We have a 63% chance to apply blind, which failed. And that one's building a crossbow, I should have pointed out. That's awkward. So I want to go for this guy, and I want to use the Power Strike here to limit his offensive ability. And this is a 100% chance of applying, I should go over that next time that we get the chance. So I don't know how much he loses exactly, but he's weaker than he used to be. Now as for Shaw... Shaw doesn't have much going. So I'm gonna face this way. And then I can move here and block the one character's back. And of course they do the AoE. I don't know if I'll be able to fully reach, is what I'm worried about. I do need to free this tile up. So I'm going to move here, and then we're going to use the Forceful Strike to knock the one dude into the other. So now the thorns are primed. You get counterattacked whenever you hit it, regardless of how you hit it. Actually, let me see. I can go here. So this has a weakness to fire, if you look at the resistances, it's minus 50. This guy has resistance to water, so you want to stick to the fire spell. Your spells will hurt allies until you get the proper skill. It's a little ways down the tree, and I'll show it to you when we try to spec her up a bit. So, go right here, and immolate. So now his thorns are primed. I faced the wrong way. I can't see, you can go to the options, this will scale the screen so you can see the same amount as you would at high resolution, but the sprites won't be as crisp. But yeah, I should have been facing him so I didn't take as much damage there. So the next person to act is going to be Vayreen here. I don't think the thorns have any sort of um, accuracy aspect to them. So if you look, the 63% is the chance of blind. The thing underneath it is the duration of the thorns. And I don't really want to move because I'll expose my one character, even though there's a very likely chance I'm going to get the forceful strike to the face. So we want to fall back a space, or two. Going to heal Adris. I don't know why that guy took so little. So yeah, Shaw does have it. So we're gonna go here and finish off the one dude before he gets an attack. So he dropped ammonia gum. The 
the wizard's getting ripped apart here. How healthy is the wizard? I think she can take the hit. Thorns aren't really bad, as you can tell. Well, they're bad-ish, I guess, but not really a problem, I should say. So we can use the flames here to finish off the one beast. So that gave me the Animal con Control Officer achievement. And then I'm going to go here so that I can protect Alana. I can hear voices coming from down below. We don't have much time if we're planning to block that trap door. So if you look in the turn order thing, there's a clock that tells you when someone's going to come out. When the event icon comes to the front of the turn order, the event triggers, yada yada. So we're going to move here so we can block it while still doing our dirty hit and hopefully blinding this person. So it's still a 63% chance of applying. And we finally got it. Yeah, the cleric is most likely dead right here. So you can see injuries drop stats by 10%. You have to sit out a battle for that. You can bring them back, they can still get injured again. And Kyrie cannot be injured because... MC. Okay, so the next person to act is going to be Sylvia here. We're going to finish her off so she doesn't get her action. And then I need to start working on this guy here so that they will die eventually. 48 damage. Nice. So I'm hoping she can get the kill there. As a result, I'm going to move here and work on this one. I don't think I have to move to it, no. So, hammer to the back. I don't know if she can burn herself. I imagine she can, so I'm going to move in position to completely mitigate that. And I should mention, if he dies, he can't throw his thorns, obviously. So if I move right here, an enemy spawns, so what I'm going to do is do field aid on myself. That way I still get some EXP, improve my survivability. Fun, fun. Okay, the blind has expired. So I'm going to pick off this one to free up my two-hander. Now to maximize my EXP, I'm just going to do the field aid here on herself and have the wizard get the kill, or worse than worse, I can have the rogue. I have options. So we should get an MVP here. So you can see we get a lot of money, we get the crossbow, and you can see the MVP, which means Adris gets bonus AP. So, 198 for all participants, Kyrie never went down, the Vicarious Learning gave 27 to everyone who had a sub-job, and 90 for the dudes on the bench. You can see our injured person there, so we'll give her a turn off to rest. Had to step away. This used to be an inn. Quite a prosperous one, if I remember all right. If I remember right, I'm not sure if that's correct. 
burned down in a marauder attack last year. And no arbiters nearby to prevent it. You allude to that scoundrel's claim about arbiters taking bribes. Nothing but a desperate attempt to talk their way out of a fight. I don't believe a word of it. And yet here we are dragging the foppish nobleman around because we can't quite trust the local chapter house. That's a long enough break. We need to keep moving if we're to reach a luster before nightfall. I'll make sure everyone's ready. So there's a story scene right here. Do you need a breather after that, Anadine? Guess I can't hurt if we're not in a rush. Thanks, Captain. Occasionally a note on the map will be marked with a uh, exclamation point, indicating that an optional event is available. Choose the event to select it from the or choose the event in the menu to actually view it. Know that some events are time sensitive and may disappear as the story progresses, so you usually want to focus those as soon as possible, because otherwise they can disappear as it sounds. So we're going to go back to the mercenary thing. I'm going to grab counterattack. Now you have to actually set this in order to use it. So go right here, choose counterattack, and now whenever you're hit with a normal ability, you have a chance to retaliate. As for the scoundrel, neither of these are really that good. We have to get them in order to move forward. So I'm going to take fleet of foot, since this can give you increased movement. We're going to need that to get a... Well, it's not necessary, but it helps you get a chest. The main thing is we want to get Arterial Cut, because this is how he can really hurt someone. Until you get that. For the mercenary, he's making his way, but still has some ways to go. As for her, we can go ahead and get Power Strike now. That locks the night job for her. He didn't set foot in battle, so he can't pick up his next set of elements. She got worked over, but she needs to sit out a fight in order to heal, so I'm going to grab her Blessed One while I have the chance. Passives are automatically equipped. I don't know why you have to do that for one, but not the other. We can see that right here. She's kneeling because she's injured. As for this one, we can go ahead and grab Field Aid. That unlocks Scoundrel. We can grab Power Strike. That unlocks Knight. And I'm going to change her job in a moment. We're probably going to have to go back to town in order to get a... Uh, I'm going to just toss Holy Magic here for the moment. Giving her Warcraft. Learn. So now she has the next set of elements. She doesn't learn Light or Dark. Those, I think, are restricted to other jobs. I know Kyrie gets an exclusive thing because she has her own unique job class. Um, who else do we have? Okay, we went down the full circle. So we're going to do the first class change, or job change. So here, they'll tell you the various breakdown. If you want to be a mercenary, your equipment is the Maul, Sword, Axe. You can use Light Armor, Heavy Armor, Shield. Get your passive abilities there. She doesn't have either one of them, but that's not really a big deal. Sturdy Grip can be a little handy, but this one can't use heavy weapons anyway. So your knights can use spears and shields. They can use robes, heavy armor, shields. Or swords and spears, I think it said shield up there. Their abilities are no flank and life font. Both of those are really good. So I'm going to swap her over, then unlock the reassignment achievement. You can see her sprite has changed. So under the abilities, I want to set this to Warcraft because she has a few moves there to use. And for the knight, I'll show that one real quick. You only have the defend thing. This does heal you, so don't hesitate to use it. And then I just want to make sure that everyone has a sub job. He does not. So we're going to just give him holy magic. Looks like he actually has... Yeah, he does have heal. I don't know why they don't set that for you. That's odd. So anyway, we can give her a break next fight and swap in Virgil. He's actually a little bit better at healing because of the wizard modifiers. And she doesn't actually have anything set. So we're going to give her... We're going to give her elementalism. She's not going to be as good, just keep in mind. So we'll do the event real quick. Patrol is the fights for this place. That was exhilarating, Captain. But I also feel a bit sick. It will pass. When I was a child, I dreamed of becoming an arbiter like my mother. I also dreamed of fighting alongside her, but that... But never that I would be wearing her armor. The armor you inherited, but the position you earned. 
Watch this one for me, would you? Yes, Captain. Why would someone with your wealth and privilege stoop to murder? If that man had wronged you, I'm sure the court would be happy to hear your case. The court's manner of dispensing just too costly, uh, slow for my taste. I don't understand. That shocks me to my core. What did he do to you? Let us just say he strayed from the rut which fate had gouged out for him. I still don't... Just like a pair of little girls I know, he interfered in the business of his betters, and quite soon afterwards paid the price for it. Perhaps one day you'll explain to me how such a powerful lord came to be the prisoner of a pair of little girls. Hmm. Now, in case you're wondering, that murder is a storyline important event, so it will be addressed. <laughs> so, real quick, I want to see what we can get for the night. She has the buckler. Nah. And now she can't use her old hat, so we have to get her the circlet. I don't really mind buying this because it's not really that expensive. We're going to burn a lot of money when we go to the new city. And for some reason my money isn't displaying. It should be in the top right corner, but it's not. Anyway, we'll go to a luster, get some scenes. I don't think there's a fight here, so we'll just do the scenes and that'll be the end of the video. Why didn't you delegate the paperwork to Anadine? That's what captains in training are for. Anadine needs a break. The journey here has been much harsher than what I would typically expect of her trainee. And this particular package I wish to deliver personally. Huh. I half guessed that was the reason. Greetings, Arbiters. How may I be of service? Hey there, Guardsman. We're dropping this prisoner off for trial on several charges, but primarily murder. Murder isn't? Shame. Not often this kind get brought in alive. You are the captain. This one's in for murder. Take him to the lower level and make sure he makes it safely to our darkest, dankest cell. I promise you'll regret this entire charade, wench, and sooner than you think. Get moving, you. He is still surprisingly confident, I must say. His arrogance is breathtaking true, but no longer any concern of ours. Go on ahead, Rainer. I will file the charges. Apologies, Captain, but they will that will have to wait. The Immortals have convened a council session, and by their order, all Arbiter Captains in the city must attend. Surely you can wait until I formally submitted the charges. I want this done properly. I'm sorry, Captain, but it cannot. This morning's edict was quite clear. This means of the highest importance, and all Captains must appear without delay. But don't worry about the prisoner. He won't be going anywhere anytime soon. Alright, thank you, Guardsman. Come on, Rainer. Immortal Council Chambers. I don't really like his artwork. <laughs> He looks more like a Castlevania character than anything that fits in here. But notice the names. They all have a number in them for the most part. Or at least an implied number in the case of Primus there. I understand you got some kind of announcement, Primus. Let's get on with it if we have to. As everyone knows, while each of the Council bears the title of Immortal, we are not quite as long-lived as that. Every so often in the course of our reign, one of our number is replaced by a younger prodigy. The new immortal retains the title of his predecessor and adopts his colors, but he is nevertheless a new immortal altogether. Is this going somewhere? Septimus? Yes, yes, I know. But important, nay critical, immortal business awaits me. Nothing less would tempt me away from this congress, I swear. Naturally. As I was saying, there comes a time for every immortal to surrender his mantle and step down. Now that time has come for me.
that is certainly going to liven things up. Me and I will have the opportunity to directly observe an immortal relinquishing his power? How absolutely fascinating! Are you quite committed to this decision, Primus? As everyone knows, I am the oldest remaining immortal alongside Quintus. I was present on the day we brought down the Ancient Beast, and I personally scribed the founding tenets of the Immortal Council. What I'm getting at is this. It has been a very long journey. Rewarding, yes, but also tiring. And the journey has come for me to step... And the time has come for me to step down. Our trusted Arbiter Captains are no doubt eager to hear what follows. Quintus, would you kindly do the honors? Me? Yes, of course, Primus. As the situation only occurs about once a century, it will be a mystery to most of you. When an immortal's time has come, a replacement is selected through a method called the Marked Pilgrimage. Every immortal marks a candidate of their choosing. The details of the pilgrimage are explained to the marked, but as they are of no importance to you, I shall waste no time on that. What should be of great interest to Arbiters, however, is that each marked is an immortal candidate, and is bound by no laws for the duration of their pilgrimage. You may render assistance unto them if it is requested, but must not otherwise interfere in their business. I believe that's everything. Are we done with surprise announcements for today, then, Primus? Excellent. Captains, you're dismissed. Primus is as old as the Council itself. It'll be strange to see another assuming his title. That little thing that's walking down the stairs will be important in a couple missions. <laughs> I suppose the day must come for each of them, and he has been at it longest. Though he does seem surprisingly fit, especially in contrast to Quintus. Oh well, there will be plenty of you else. There will be plenty else to worry about soon enough. From what I've heard about the Mark Pilgrimage, chaos follows closely on its heels. Wait, what's this? Decided to take the air, did you, Alphonse? Because I don't think it will agree with you. Well, well, the nosy wench and her hired gorilla. Come to see me off? We're here to see you return to your cell, and promptly. I can't believe it. One of the immortals has chosen you to be a marked? You are much sharper than you look, I grant you that. But indeed, only the absolute finest are selected as candidates for the exalted rank of immortal. It's only natural my name would end up at the top of that list. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must hasten on my pilgrimage to Sentina, and thereafter my imminent ascension to godhood. We're just going to let him go? You heard the Council's judgment. He is above the law now. Untouchable. No. I can't believe that he... that him was made a mark by the Council. I need some time to think on this. Spread the word. We leave tomorrow at first light for Sentina. I have a feeling trouble is going to find us on the way. But yeah, I'm going to have to definitely look at the resolution and stuff because my money shouldn't be cut off there. We should visit the store before we depart for Sentina. We could certainly use an upgrade to some of our equipment. So this is going to be the end of the video. So, there's nothing new here, but we can get some accessories. The thing that sucks is while this does give you evasion, it's really expensive. Yeah, you can't really see all my stuff here, so I definitely have to screw with the resolution here. I'm gonna go ahead and get one of the demi gauntlets. We'll get a demi gauntlet there. So she can't use that, but we can give her a gauntlet. They're Blah. So yeah, the main thing here are accessories. When we get to the new town, we can go ahead and... Uh, definitely want to give her one. We'll get newer things there, primarily like weapons and armor. A 
basically I'm just gonna get a gauntlet for everyone. That's what I was afraid of. So I can't exactly see how much I'm missing. As such, I'm going to take hers off. How do I remove? So a new set of routes has appeared. This is the new town. So I have to let one of my characters, the I have to let Lana sit out before we can go down Timber Road and we'll see what ends up happening. So, next video I want to try to get these two and then we'll arrive in Sentina which will then send us down here. But until then, I'm the Hero of Light, thanks for watching, and goodbye.